So, Lori, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about The Second Coming by William Butler Yeats. You want to read it to us? Okay. The Second Coming. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed and everywhere. The ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out, when a vast image out of Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man. A gaze blank and pitiless as the sun is moving its slow thighs, while all about it reel shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast its hour come round at last slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. So what do you think of it? I don't know. You've um, read it a few times. I've now. read it about five or six times. And I think it's um, beautiful and I think it's disturbing. Mm. And I think it's confusing. Um, but that's what I think about a lot of poetry. Sure. And that, that's kind of the wonderful thing about poetry is it's like a peek into somebody's brain while it's still a little disorganized. Right. You can unchange things from their strict meaning and explore those sort of gray areas. Yeah, and it's not meant to give you the solution. It's meant to make you think, I think. Um, the inside of my head looks a lot like that sometimes, so, um, but yeah, it is a little disturbing. It's confusing because it uses some biblical imagery and it makes some clear biblical references, um, both to the birth of Christ, or it seems to point back to that, and also to, um, the second coming of Christ, or that seems to be what he's hinting at, um. I mean, I understand he was writing sometime after World War One. They'd seen right. so much death, and the world was falling apart, and everybody was um, disillusioned, and the problem wasn't quite solved by the war. No, and in fact, it really put a focus on the horribleness of humankind. But one of the things that also really sticks out to me is that first line, turning and turning in the widening gyre, uh, which I think... If I, I think is a reference to the cyclical nature of history. That there's nothing new under the sun. That this is the story that was always told. I may be getting my time wrong, and I may be attributing something to Yeats that he didn't mean to be there. But I, I think about Spengler. Oswald Spengler wrote The Decline of the West. It's a book about, uh, I think roughly about this time, about how civilizations go through cycles and there oh. are different types of civilizations. And well, isn't this that is something like um, Hegel's... Wasn't he the one with the dialectic that, uh, you know, thesis, antithesis, yes. synth synthesis, that these things keep coming around? Yes, and I think... And, and that's around that time, Marx and all. But no, he would have written that quite a bit earlier, right? Uh, I believe so, but I think that one of the things Yeats is talking about is the cyclical nature of humankind because of these patterns that we have. The, uh, the uh, uh, blood dim tide is loosed and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. Yeah. I mean, that's the story of humankind right there, isn't it? Well, and especially in the wake of the bloodiest war the world had ever known up to that point. Um, you know, they keep getting bloodier. Well, they hadn't gotten bloodier yet. Right. Um, so, yeah. But there's a universality to this, too. I mean, I, I think that he wrote it in his time 
on these things that he was reflecting on, but they certainly can speak to us today. The the sense that we were just talking about uh, the the last hour and how bad things can get. Yeah. But yeah, and it's interesting too because even in scripture, you know, people talk about these are the last days, we must be in the last days and the and the apostle John said in his second epistle, we are in the last hour, brothers, and he's talking about antichrist and he says there's already been many. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think every generation has had its version or its uh, iteration and I think, of Antichrist. I think that that goes into what we were talking about before, about uh, Spiritus Mundi, mm. about the sort of collective unconscious thing, this, this, this uh, hero or villain of a thousand faces thing, these, again, recurring things, uh, sort of this ever widening gyre of of ending of a, of, of of doom yeah that's interesting the spirit is Monday it means like the spirit of the earth spirit of right. the world right? right you know and and you know we're of course Christians and there's a little double meeting yeah there. Yes. yeah we're of course Christians and and you know we're you know we don't think all that highly of the spirit of this world and the spirit of this age you know I guess the scripture you know uh, uh, doesn't uh, encourage us toward uh, that I don't know maybe it's just a, a use of that word I'm you know a little uncomfortable with but um, but we've been reading Ecclesiastes too and, mm-hmm. and, and, and what you see there is kind of what this world is in its futility yes and that's a book that has wide uh, readership outside of Christian or Jewish literature I mean we have a song to everything turn turn mm-hmm. there's a season you know and and because it's it's spirit is mundi it's something that all that's common to all humanity right um, right and I don't want to put words in dead people's mouths, but I kind of think Yates would be tracking with us on this. Maybe. I don't know them, anything about him, really. No, but you know what he just said to us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little, uh, you know, his... Um, I'm, I'm a little perplexed by his symbolism of the, the, the lion body with the head of a man mm. that could be taken to be a reference to Christ, the, the God-man. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Lion of the tribe of Judah. But there's not a... And, and, and maybe he's referring to him coming back again in the second coming um, as a judge because he refers to him not as... He does reference the cradle rocking you know, and he talks about 2,000 years, so it's it's clear this is what he's making reference to, but I'm not sure if he sees the second coming as a positive thing in the Christian sense, or if he sees it as from the perspective of doom. I understand that. I think from the Christian sense, though, there's a sense in which that terribleness is true as well, yeah, even yeah. for yeah. the people who yearn to see Christ return. Yes, yeah it's, it, yeah, it's not a party. Exactly. It's, it's, it's yeah. kind of a horrible thing. It's judgment on, on what the world has become. And the pangs leading up to it are horrible to live through. I think that there's a, a universalness to that reaction as well. What do you think about this... Uh, This, uh, that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast its hour come round at last slouches toward Bethlehem to be born? I think my read on that is that in the time from... Christ's ascension 
to the second coming because I, th- I, I, I really think he is undoubtedly talking about Christ there. Really, well, there's the no line. question. That watching the nightmare of human civilization unfold, waiting for the time of rebirth, uh, sort of the uh, uh, nightmare of the martyrs under the altar calling out how long, O oh Lord, uh, before justice comes. I think, I think that's the nightmare. I think the nightmare is the unfolding of humankind's, or for lack of a better word, sinfulness, uh, and, and the actions that come from that. So the rough beast is Christ the judge, as opposed to Christ the rocking infant? Yes. Yes. Uh, the image I get in my mind is a devouring thing, it is, is a lion, mm. rather than a gentle baby in a, in a manger. So why, why Bethlehem? Is, is, is he, you know, me, I'm always too literal. <laughs> is he using Bethlehem? He's not saying he thinks that the, this, at the second coming is launched from Bethlehem, but he's referring us to make sure there's no question about who we're talking about. Yes, I, I, I don't think that I don't think that this is reportage by Yates. I don't think he's he, he's specifically saying this is a thing that is going to take place in the city of Bethlehem. I think he is referencing that for clarity for it, 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 for yeah. what we would know in the in the Spiritus Mundi. <laughs> so he's tar- he's he's drawing out he's drawing forth this symbol yes. of Bethlehem so that we know what rocking cradle he's talking about. I um, think so. Interesting. Well, we can probably wrap it up. All right. And it was quite an assignment. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. I did too. Yeah, that's a good book. It's good, a good, good book. It, it's a very good poem, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's an excellent poem. Well, thank you for watching. Ta-ta.